Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1214 of our trek, and it is time for Meditation Monday. Taking time to relax, refocus, and reprioritize our lives is crucial in order to create a living legacy. For you, it may be just a time alone for quiet reflection. You may utilize some sort of structured meditation practices. In my life, meditation includes reading and reflecting on God's Word and in prayer. It is a time to renew my mind, refocus on what is most important, and making sure that I am nurturing my soul, mind, and body. As you come along with me on our trek each Meditation Monday, it is my hope and prayer that you too will experience a time of reflection and renewing of your mind. After fighting hard-won battles of life, you may be too weary to continue on and reclaim what was lost. In today's meditation, let us consider rest for the weary soul. There is a brook that is mentioned in the book of 1 Samuel that you may not have heard of. It is called Brook Bezor. Don't feel bad if you've never heard of the place. Most people haven't, but more people need to. The Brook Beezer story deserves a shelf on the space of the library of those who are worn out. It speaks tender words and need address for those who are weary of soul. I think most of us can relate to that. The story emerges from the ruins of a town called Ziglag. David and 600 soldiers returned from the Philistine war front to find that the city which the army was from was in utter devastation. A raiding band of Amalekites had swept down on the village looted it, and taken all the women and children hostage. The sorrow of David's soldiers morphs into anger, not against the Amalekites, but against David. After all, hadn't he led them into battle? David is the commander of the army, and he left the women and children unprotected. Isn't David to blame? The soldiers think so, and that he needs to die, so they start grabbing up stones. After the victory over the Philistines, returning home could be David's worst hour. But David, with the wisdom of God, makes it one of his best. David redirects the men's anger toward the enemy. They set out in pursuit of the Amalekites. But keep the soldiers' weariness in mind. They were still covered with the trail dust of a long campaign and haven't entirely extinguished their anger for David. They don't know where the Amalekites' hideout is, and if it was not for the sake of their loved ones, they might just give up and take the loss. In this story, though, we learn that 200 of the 600 soldiers are ready to rest. The army reaches the brook called Bezer, and they dismount. All the soldiers wade into the creek, splash water on their faces, sink their tired toes in the cool mud, and stretch out on the grass. After hearing David's command to move on in pursuit of the Amalekites, 200 of his 600 soldiers choose to rest. You go on without us, they say. How tired does a person have to be to abandon a hunt for his own family? The church may also have their share of weary soldiers. They're good people, godly people. Only hours, or maybe years ago, they marched with deep resolve. But now fatigue consumes them. They're exhausted so beat up and worn down that they can't summon the strength to save their own flesh and blood. Maybe old age has sucked their oxygen. Maybe a defleeting string of defeats. Divorce can leave you at the brook. Addiction can as well. Whatever the reason, the church has its share of those who just want to sit and rest. The church must decide. What do we do with these Brook Beezer people? Do we berate them? Shame them? Give them the rest, but measure the minutes? Or do we do what David did? David let them stay. David and the remaining 400 soldiers marched on and resumed their chase. David and his men swooped down on the Amalekites like hawks on rats. Every Israelite woman and child was rescued. 
every Amalekite either bites the dust or hits the trail, leaving their precious plunder behind. David goes from scapegoat to hero, and the whooping and the hollering of the soldiers begin. But what about the 200 men who had rested and chose not to fight? You might feel the same way that some of David's men felt as recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 22. But some evil troublemaker among David's men said, They didn't go with us, so they can't have any of the plunder we recovered. Give them their wives and children and tell them to be gone. The explosive emotions are stirred, and David needs to put out the explosive before it blows up. Here's how he diffuses it. David said in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 23 and 24, No, my brothers, don't be selfish with what the Lord has given us. He has kept us safe and helped us to defeat the band of raiders that attacked us. Who will listen when you talk like this? We share and share alike, those who go to battle and those who guard the equipment. Note David's words here. They guarded the equipment, as if that had been their job. They hadn't been asked to guard the equipment, They wanted to rest, but David dignifies their decision to stay. David did many mighty deeds in his life, but he also did many foolish deeds in his life. But perhaps the noblest was this rarely discussed deed. He honored the weary soldiers at Brook Bezer. Perhaps someday someone will read what David did and name their church the congregation at Brook Bezer. Isn't that what the church is intended to be? A place for soldiers to recover their strength? If you are listed among them, here's what you need to know. It's okay to rest. Jesus is your David. He allows you to rest your weary soul at his brook beezer. He fights when you cannot. He goes where you cannot. Jesus is not angry if you rest. Did not he invite us in Mark chapter 6 verse 31? Then Jesus said, Let's go off by ourselves for a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and the apostles didn't even have time to eat. Jesus provides us with Brook Beezer, a place of quiet rest. Brook Beezer also cautions against arrogance. David knew the victory was a gift. Let's remember the same. Salvation comes like the Egyptian in the desert that showed David and his army where the Amalekites were camped. He was a delightful surprise on the path, like salvation, unearned and undeserved. Who are the strong to criticize the tired? Are you weary? Take time to catch your breath. We need you, and God's church needs your strength. Are you strong? Well, reserve passing judgment on the tired. Odds are, you'll need to plop down yourself. And when you do... Brick Beezer is a good story to know. Let's take time to meditate on this today. And that's a wrap for today's meditation. Next week, we will continue on our trek on Meditation Monday as we take time to reflect on what is most important in creating our living legacy. On tomorrow's trek, we will explore another wisdom quote. This three-minute wisdom supplement will assist you on becoming healthy, wealthy, and wise each day. Thank you for joining me for this trek that we call life. Encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,213 daily treks or read the daily journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek Podcast and Journal each day. And as we take this trek of life, together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, Lead with integrity and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.